Hi, how's it going everyone? My name is Hank and welcome back to the channel. And what a bombshell we just had uh, before the end of the week. A2 milk shares plummet after their uh, updated guidance and their shares has, has actually been down by more than 20%. So let's take a look into that. If we take a look at the charts, we can see that the A2 milk share price has been steadily decreasing over the past couple of months. And then when the news came out of the updated guidance, its price just pretty much fell off a cliff. So let's take a look at uh, what exactly they said in the updated guidance. So A2 Milk expects the uh, first half revenue for 2021 to be around $670 million and with a margin of 27% and its 2021 full year revenue to be between the $1.4 billion to $1.55 billion and with a margin between 26% to 29%. Now, just a few months ago, they had initial forecasts of the first half revenue to be uh, between 725 to 775 million and the revenue for the year was to be uh, 1.8 billion to 1.9 billion with a margin of 31%. So this is around a 10% decrease in their revenue forecast that they made back in September and around a 5% decrease of their margins. In the same statement that they released, they also said that the disruption to the Daigo channel has proven to be more significant than how they previously have thought. However, they did say that they expect the profit margin to climb back up to 30% over the medium term. So what I'm going to do now is try to look at this news from a few different angles. And the first one that we're going to do is just look at the price calculation using our trusty spreadsheet. Back to the intrinsic value calculation spreadsheet that I did a video on a while ago, uh, which I will link in a card above. So I won't go into all the details of how the spreadsheet functions, but I'll just get the uh, figures to plug into the spreadsheet. So the stock that we're looking at is uh, on the New Zealand exchange ATM and the spreadsheets automatically uh, grabs the stock price and the earnings per share from uh, Google Finance. So currently the stock price is $11 per share, earnings per share 0 0.52. Now for the growth rate, analysts originally estimated more than 20% growth in the uh, ATM company over the next couple of years. Now it's probably a good time to revise those uh, growth rates. So looking at the news article, they're expecting the profit margin to grow from around 26% to around 30% over the medium term. So if we plug that into a calculator, if say at present we have 26% and we want to reach 30%, return and in the medium term we'll say it'll be around five years time and we calculate that we need around a 2.9 percent annual growth rate to be able to achieve that return so we go back to our spreadsheet and plug in our 2.9 percent now rate of return that we want to achieve we'll leave it at 15 percent and we'll leave the same margin of safety at around 30 percent the next thing that we need to look up is the weighted cost of capital, which is the WAC value. So the easiest way that I have found to look up the WAC value is to simply search out the uh, WAC value on Google itself. So if we look for the WAC value for A2 Milk, we can go to a website that basically estimates the uh, WAC value. Here we're just going to pick the uh, middle value of 7% as our WAC value for our A2 milk. And then we're going to plug it back into the spreadsheet again. So we have our WAC value of 7%, which we will plug into the spreadsheet. Uh, next thing that we need is the clash flow in terms of thousands for A2 milk. So in order to find that, we go back into Yahoo Finance. In Yahoo Finance, we'll go to the financials page and then look for the uh, cash flows. So for the cash flow, we look for the most recent cash flow return, so which is this value. And this value is already in numbers of thousands. So we just copy that value and plug it back into the spreadsheet. 
So it auto automatically populates some of the values that we have here. And the next thing that we need is the number of shares outstanding. And this is again going to be in uh, numbers of thousands. So for this value, we'll go back into Yahoo Finance. And this time we're going to look into the statistics page. And down here near the middle, we can find the number of shares outstanding. So for the number of shares outstanding, we have 740 million shares. So if we plug that into the spreadsheet, so 7486, and we need it to be in number of thousands. So we add in. And here is where we come up with the fair value for A2 milk at the moment is around $13.15. Now this fair value is actually lower than the current stock price, uh, which means that A2 milk is currently undervalued using this uh, spreadsheet calculation formula. But for this value, we have not actually applied a margin of safety. So if we apply a margin of safety of 30%, so if we times that, times that value by 0.7 to give it a 30% a margin for fair value. So the fair value that we want to purchase the shares is if it goes under $9.21. So that's what you get uh, using the intrinsic value calculation spreadsheet. Now, unfortunately, this is when I have to talk about why I am not a huge fan of these intrinsic value calculations anymore. The first reason is that there's so many different factors that go into the calculation of intrinsic value, uh, especially using your dis discounted cash flow analysis method. So you're making quite a lot of assumptions on in terms of growth rate, in terms of whack, and in terms of how the uh, cash flow is estimated. And by changing these values, you can get wildly different results. So for example, if I stuck to what well, a lot of analysts has previously predicted of the growth rate and say that there is a 20% growth rate, the uh, fair value changes significantly. If I change the uh, weighted cost of capital, which is the WAC value, down to maybe 5.5%, that also changes the fair value of the uh, company significantly. So any small changes will have huge effect on the calculated fair value for the particular company. And you have to realize that analysts can be wrong quite often as well. So it's the same analysts that were previously predicting a 1.8 to 1.9 billion dollars in revenue for A2 Milk the next year. And it's the same analysts that now revised uh, their prediction back into the 1.4 to 1.5 billion region. So, so much of this is basically hinging on the reports of these analysts. The second reason is that these intrinsic value calculations does not take into account at all of outside factors, such as how the interest rates all around the world has been quite low recently. And people just simply not getting any money by putting um, their money into savings accounts. So a lot of them tend to look for either shares or property or even trying to start a business. But um, again, starting up a business is going to be a very difficult in the current uh, situation with so much lockdowns going on. I've had people come out to me and say, oh, don't buy A2 milk, its price is dropping. And I think a lot of times this really clearly misses the point here. So I want uh, I want people to think about why exactly are they looking to buy a share in a particular company? If when you buy a company, you are going to sell it as soon as the share price start uh, falling, and you're only going to buy something when the share price is rising, you're thinking about it completely the wrong way. And these are the same people that buy cryptocurrency when it's reaching an all-time high price and still expect it to go much higher. People seem to be far more willing to purchase Bitcoin, which in all honesty has not actually done that much for society or making profit itself rather than investing in a profitable company. Now, for sure, A2 Milk is going to be uh, having less earnings and revenue. 
uh, over the coming few years, but it's still a very profitable company. So I find it very interesting how people are just so quick to uh, dismiss all that and have no problem in pouring all their money into uh, like Bitcoin and maybe other companies that don't seem to be earning any money at all, such as Pacific Edge, which has its share price up massively this year. And they're still a company that is not making any profit at all. I'm not saying that you can't make a profit out of cryptocurrency, which again, you obviously can. But what many people seem to do is that they make some profit and then they take out some of the money that they have in there. Now, this completely goes against the idea of compounding interest, where basically you pick a, a good company or a bunch of good companies and you just consistently invest in it for the long term. And then the interest will roll upon itself and grew to a massive margin. Now, the problem with Bitcoin is you never know exactly what is going to happen in the future. It may just spike up to 30,000 per Bitcoin, or it may crash down over time to around 5,000. The point is you never exactly know what is going to happen. And sure, you can say that as well for maybe one or two companies. But if you invest in a bucket of good companies, the chances of all the good companies failing is significantly lower. Another thing that I want to mention is that if you are someone that cannot stomach seeing your portfolio go down by a big percentage when you're holding individual company stocks, maybe you should not be holding that particular company stock. And you should probably go into more safe investments such as index funds, which uh, don't have the, uh, the tendency to go down by 20% in one trading day. If you're considering whether or not to sell A2 Milk at this particular stage, try to think about your investment time frame and why are you investing in the first place. Now, if you sell now, you are literally locking in your losses if you have purchased at a higher price. It's kind of like early on this year, we have the massive drop due to the virus situation and a lot of people have sold out of their position around the big drop and now it has pretty much completely recovered over time and people have lost a lot of money by selling at the low and now as the market goes higher they want to buy back in again so this is the classic example of buying high and selling low instead of what you actually want to do which is to buy low at where the market is lower and sell at where the market is high so what is the most likely situation that's going to happen now is that since the news broke out on a friday it's entirely likely that the share price will keep on going down for a couple of days uh, before people that want to pick up the uh, A2 milk shares at a lower price will come in and push the uh, price up. And then until then, we can't really see what exactly is going to happen with the uh, A2 milk share price. But if you still believe in the company long term, you should just hold on to your shares. Long term wise, I still have faith in the company itself. Now, while it may take quite a long time for the share price to recover, but I see the A2 Milk as a long term investment rather than a short term trading option for you to make some money within a week or a month or so. And some people have been telling me that it may take up to two years for the share price to recover back to its highs around the $21 region. And I said, sure, take as long as you want. Like this is exactly why you want to diversify your portfolio so that you are not re exactly relying on this one particular company to be doing well. So you want to have a uh, range of companies so that, you know, if sometimes there's some bad news coming out uh, with one company, your other companies can still balance out your portfolio. And that's it for this video. I'm sure there'll be plenty of you that might disagree with me with what's going on with the A2 Milk situation. But let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.